Hockey Inside Out, presented to you by the Montreal Gazette. Welcome to another season of the HIO Show. I hope you all had a great summer out there. It was a busy summer for the Canadians. Oh, yeah. I'm back here today with Chris Nyland, Jack Todd, and Mike Boone. I guess, Chris, the big news was Max Pacioretty being named captain, voted by the team. Is this the right vote? Would you have voted for him? Yeah, it's the right vote for sure. It's the right vote because the team voted for him. His teammates voted for him. I think it's a great thing. Uh, listen, Max, uh, is there a perfect candidate, I think, as far as this team? Max is the perfect candidate. Um, you know, he's he's level-headed, low-key. He's not too uh, brash. He's not too out there. And I think you need a, a, a guy who who uh, is calm, is is in control. And I, I just think it's a good move. And his teammates, obviously. Um, feel the same. I know you disagree, Jack. You were to call yeah. P.K. Subban should be captain, <laughs> and I imagine you got a little bit of reaction from that. Oh, yeah. Uh, hundreds, Jack Todd, wrong again. <laughs> wrong Anyone again. keeping count? I, you know what? I think I think when people say I'm wrong, they go to the comments section. When they come to me, it's it's usually 80, 90 percent favorable, so I got all the favorable You're not Subban wrong. Reaction. It's your opinion. I'm yeah, just all joking. wet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, to me, I, to me I, I said it was like Apple versus Bell. Pacioretty was the safe choice. He was Bell, you know. PK was Apple. He was going for Brooks, saying, "Screw this. We want the emotion. We want the fire. We want the guy who's going to be there in a Game Seven of a Stanley Cup Final, which we hope to get to." Uh, I see that coming for more from PK. He's he'll more likely to defend his teammates on the ice. Pacioretty's probably better PR, although uh, the timing the day after the hospital donation was a little bit... Although, uh, although Gallagher and Pika got in a little bit of a scuffle at practice, that happens all the time, but I'm wondering, Mike, is Pika almost like the annoying brother to some of these guys? I think so. I think since he joined the team, I, I mean, he hasn't... I don't know that he would win a popularity contest in the dressing room even today. I mean, just that uh, his brashness, the fact that he's, he's so out there, he's never met a camera he doesn't love. Yeah. This, this, you know, sometimes this doesn't, uh, this doesn't fly in the room to that great a degree. Does he remind you at all of like Gary Carter? Oh yeah, exactly. His name, nickname oh, could be man. Lights, just like Carter. <laughs> now, another of the summer moves is signing Semin, Alex Semin. Is this, is, are they going to regret this or is this going to work out? I, I think it's going to work out for them. And listen, I'm the one who called this guy a dog last year. He signed a big contract, just packed it in. Didn't work. Uh, you know, everybody said, oh, he didn't have any Russian players there with him. He has four here with him. And blah, blah, blah. Here's the deal. The guy's been around the league long enough. Um, he's shown what he can do when he applies himself and he cares about either a contract or the team. And I happen to think this one-year deal is a good deal because, again, you're getting a guy who can score goals if he plays. You're not spending a lot of money on it. Yeah, there's a question mark there, but coming into this environment uh, with uh, this crowd, the, the fan base, uh, the good core of players they have here, just it, it might be what this kid needs and to And Mark had to stay on his butt. Yeah. I think the yeah. Russian thing will really help. Yeah. You know, after yeah, practice well, at Brasov the other day, uh, Sherbach came in the room and he was talking Russian back and forth yeah. with Galchenyuk and he mentioned how nice it was just to be able to speak in your own language sure. and feel that comfort. Especially for a guy, you know, he, he's the most unilingual Russian in the league I've seen since Kovalenko who came here and said, me Russian tank. You know, uh, Simmons about a half a level above that, but uh, you know, you're in a place like Carolina, I've been there a few times, you know, nice uh, cosmopolitan high-tech area with about 12 Russians. Uh, it's yeah. just not a guy, place a guy like that can feel at home. I think it also it speaks to the organization's difficulty in, developing, in drafting and developing scorers at this point. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that they need someone They've like They've made that there. progress, though. You know, mm -hmm. when you look at now, we're starting to see some of those drafts from Bergevin starting to play in the American Hockey League now. So yeah. we're starting to see, this team I think is gonna be competitive down there this year, but I think we're starting to see those draft picks now where, you know, we're kind of the old regime, uh, you know, the guys are here. Now we're starting to see the others, but I hear you as far as the goal scorers, they haven't drafted well as far as that goes. Now right at the beginning of training camp, Bergevin came out and said, Alex Galchenik is now a center. Will he be a center the whole year, do you think, Jack? Or what's gonna, <laughs> how's this gonna play out? Uh, I don't think he will be. 
just because he's playing for Terrien. There'll be uh, one too many screw-ups in uh, the defensive end, and uh, Terrien will get uh, impatient. I, honestly, I think they should put him there and leave him there. No matter how many mistakes he makes, no matter how bad it looks, let him get his confidence and build. Because, But I would I would be surprised if it goes beyond 20 games. i got to get my phone out to calculate how many times you're wrong. To <laughs> <laughs> he's absolutely staying at center. The kid was, you know, he was a playmaker in junior. He's got help from Lars Seller and the defensive dimension of, of, of how their line's going to play. He's been sensational in the exhibition season, and that's it. He's staying at center. Well, that lead him there. That line, Galchenyuk, Eller, and Simon has worked well in the preseason, Chris, but can that continue through when the games really count? Yeah, it sure could. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the Eller thing, and again, it, I think it's good he's on the wing with him. He's that safety valve in the defensive zone. He can be there, especially on the road, and keep faceoffs in your own end. That line's going to get stuck out there, and you're not going to be able to make the change. Lars Eller can step in the faceoff circle. As far as Galchenyuk being there all year, listen, I think there's a good possibility he's going to. Um, I understand what Jack's saying about the coach and how he switches things up, but I think the only way that it maybe uh, get switched up if he is if he there's a rash of injuries on this team that that's going to be the deciding factor other than that I, I think they're going to stick with him and and really um, and, and really try and get him to develop it, it would really change things if he had another offensive line a real offensive line to, to sure. take the pressure off Pacioretty's line that would transform this team but now Thomas Fleischman comes in on a tryout contract he's looked pretty good do you keep him here at the expense of some of the younger guys on the team that, that could fill that role? I, 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 I think do. so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I've been really impressed with him. You look back at his record, uh, you know, this is a guy is not that far from a 27-goal season. I just find the way he looks on the ice, you can just tell he's older, he, he knows what to do, he's a thorough professional, works hard, got a bit of size, you know, could be a defensive forward or an offensive forward, either one. Uh, you know, it's too bad, but then it gives him more time to develop the kids, too. When That's true, like and I say that, I, that AHL team, the Ice Caps, is going to be a good team. Yeah. we got a lot more to talk about. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back to the HIO Show. Uh, Mark Bergevin, one of his favorite sayings is, you can never have too many defensemen. He's got a lot right now, Chris. Who, who sits out? Who's yeah. Who knows? Uh, I like the fact that they have DEP on defense, and they do have depth. But, you know, you look at the, the whole Tenority situation. Um, uh, here's a kid right now, I think he just lacks confidence. I actually feel bad for him. You know, I think they rushed him a little bit. That Ottawa series, when they were getting beat up, they threw him to the Wolves there. And then I think in his head he thought he might be here. And he was up and down a bit. Um, yeah, I'm worried about him. But as far as the whole defense, I like what I see. I mean, um, yeah, guys will be battling for position, but it looks pretty strong. I like the fact that the guys can move the puck. There's some toughness there. You got pattern, um, you know, uh, bully moving the puck, new kids coming in. I, I, I like it. Yeah, yeah, and you've got a full season now with Petrie, so you've got yeah. a big three at well, least, yeah, and maybe a big four with Bollier. That was the biggest signing of the summer, And Tenorti getting pushed farther and farther down. If you put him on waivers, you know somebody's going to grab him. They won't give crap to get him, but, you know, if they can yeah, get him yeah. for free, no, they'll do it. I think they'll try to trade him. You know, oh, I think they'll try to, but, uh, choice, but yeah. I think the Bergevin's fellow GMs are going to sit back and say, oh, I'll be able to grab this guy for nothing, you know? Well, in other words, Alexi Emlin, he's got three years left at $4 million. Is he tradable? Yeah. If they need a move, do you think, Mike? Well, if somebody needs some sort of physical presence, but I've just described the Montreal Canadiens. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's no, still the only trade. guy who puts a hurting on people. Actually. Yeah. Oh, and keep your head yeah. up, right? Yeah. When he's out yeah. on the ice. Yeah. Yeah. With Petrie, with the six years, do you think that's too long, or will that, is that going to work out okay? Uh, listen, it's good they have him locked up. I think it's a good thing. He's solid defenseman, great with the puck. I think he's going to grow here as a player. Too much, again, I think too much was at, asked of him in Edmonton, you know, and the pressure was on him, the expectation was high. Here, uh, he's got a good group around him. No. I, I laughed one night, uh, Yevelin and Petrie were both having a terrible night working together. Petrie looked like he was back in Edmonton. Everybody on Twitter is, get rid of the Russian, you know, it's always <laughs> his fault. Like, well, it says hey, there's two of them out there and they're both screwing up. I think. Know? 
Petrie left money on the table to sign yeah. it. That says something about yeah. the quality of the organization. And the fact his wife was his wife. No, no, no yeah, it says something about his wife. Montreal. His yeah. wife liked Montreal. <laughs> How long has she been deaf? <laughs> <laughs> now, with they, we're talking about Tenorti and the pressure we face. It's almost like every time he makes a mistake, he's worried he's going to uh, be sent down. On the other hand, you have Nathan Beaulieu, who looks so confident right yeah. now when he's playing. I'm wondering, can he be as good or as close to as good as P.K. Subban one day? I don't know that far. I won't go that far. But listen, he, the upside to him is uh, tremendous. He has, this kid could play. He's a heady player. I like the fact that he doesn't take any crap from anybody. He moves a puck. He's the one guy who really takes wrist shots to the net and gets the puck to him. He, didn't, he hardly ever takes slap shots. He gets the puck to the net. I really like Nathan. He's good in his own end. Ovechkin last game tried to dangle and put it between his legs. And it looked like he got around him. He come back with a poke check that was just, what a great defensive play. He got a great stick. I love this kid. His upside is huge for this I team. think he's closer to Matthew Schneider than to Pika. Yeah, he's, he's that right, type of player. Right. So the pivoting and turning to get the puck, he's so mm, quick. Yeah, it's yeah, fun yeah, to watch him. It's the best defense they've had, maybe since the big three, but for sure since the mid-'90s, Serge had that really good group they called yeah. the Young Guns, and he started mm -hmm. busting them up, sending Desjardins out, sending Schneider out, and, it, he, and he kept. Patrice Brisebois was the only guy who stuck. You know, I hope this time they're smart enough to hang on to the good ones. So. Now, Zach Cassian, you know, acquired for Brandon Press during the summer. He hasn't really stood out during the preseason. Is he going to bring more to this team than Brandon Press? Another question mark like Semin. Hopefully. He has a kid that, uh, you know, he, he has the potential to do a lot of things, but he has to take care of his life on the ice and off the ice. If he does that, gets focused on hockey, is a team guy. Um, I saw. I, I like the way he skates. He can handle the puck. He, there's, there's some promise there. He's got to tap into that and 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 give this team what is expected of him. What it, possible off ice temptations would there be in Montreal? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're in every city. <laughs> no, Carey Price, obviously, I mean, he's looked really good in the preseason again. Yeah. Uh, can he even pop what he did last year? I, I don't think so. And he doesn't have, if I have a kind of a concern with the, the Canadians, you have those three top guys, Subban, Pacioretty, and Price. They can't really do much more than they're doing. They're, you know, they're pretty maxed well out. maxed yeah. out, yeah. you know. So That's if true. this team is going to get to that next level and make a Stanley Cup final, it's going to have to come from, you know, guys like Beaulieu and Petrie and, and getting lucky with either Cassian or Semin and some things like that. And, and, and Galchenyuk. Yeah. And Galchenyuk. It would be ridiculous to expect more out of Price. You just, I don't think you can be better than that. Galchenyuk looks, looks big, though. So I'm in the locker room in Brossard. He was telling me when he first came to the Kings, he was 185 pounds. Galchenyuk? Now he's, now, now he's yeah. 205 is the, he used to have, uh, He's a big workout yeah. warrior guy. He's, he's always be, been that way since he's junior. He's a lot stronger. Yeah, yeah, as long as it's not yeah. Putin weight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, well, he's, he's not as big as Michael McCarron, who has been sent down to the ice caps. Uh, your thoughts on him, Chris? Is he going to be up here again this yeah, year? Yeah, just leave him down there, let him play, let him play, let him play, let him play. He'll be here when the time comes. There's no sense in rushing that kid. I, I go back to Tenorti. Honestly, that series against Ottawa, I don't think helped him. It didn't help him mentally. Uh, he got out there. They had to throw him in there because they were getting beat up. And, you know, some of this is on the kid. And I think some is on the organization. And maybe some on his dad, Chris, in terms well, of the expectations. And could what, be. What, uh, you could know. be. You don't know what the dad's whispering in his ear. But, again, I'm, I'm sure he's trying to help his son and do the best he can for him but sometimes that doesn't always translate into the um the the right thing he's also changed his equipment i know he was uh, went from ccm to bauer and i uh, asked him in one of the practices what did he do he used to have that lucky jacket his dad's ccm jacket he said well i still have it at home anyway that's it for this week's show of uh, hockey inside out we'll see you again next week 